Hello and welcome back to our channel. Today we are going to talk about one of the most important concepts of object oriented programming and object oriented design and this is continuing in the part series, 8 part series of object oriented design. It's called encapsulation. Right. So let's jump straight in. Encapsulation. What is encapsulation? In its simple terms, encapsulation is bundling data and methods together into a single unit called class. Right? That's, that is what encapsulation is. Basically, you are encapsulating members which are data and which are methods together into one unit that is called a class. Now, if you take a code example of a class, let's look at this class. This class is a person class. If you see clearly here the first two lines, uh, we have defined two attributes which are two data elements of the class which is name and age of the of the person right then we have defined a constructor uh, for the person class which will take as input the name and age and it is going to set the name and age of this person class right that's a constructor that will be used for uh, initiating an object of the class right and then we have few access methods we are going to discuss uh, in more details about access modifiers uh, but get name get age and set age are three access modifiers which are basically used to access the data members of this class which is age and name right uh, the only you can only set the age you uh, but you cannot set the name the name has to be set only via the constructor right so we don't have access method we are not providing an access method for name in this example so that is possible also notice but in the set age method, you also have a validation. You will only set the age of a person if it is more than zero, right? You can't have a person with age minus three or something like that, right? So that is the validation that you can put into a setter, right? That is a set uh, uh, method. And then we have a, a normal public method, which is a display info, which is basically going to display the uh, name and age or, or all the attributes of this of this class. In this case, it is the person class, right? So now, how will we use this person class? So let's take this example where we are. We have a class called main, and we are defining the main method. Inside that, the first line, what we are doing is we are creating a person object, right? The way we are creating the person object is by using the constructor. So we are calling new person, and we are passing name and age, which is John and thirty, right? Then we are using that person object the person object name is john we're using that and then we are basically just printing uh, the name and age of the person by using the access modifiers which you can see in the next two lines john dot get name john dot get age right so it is going to print the name and age of uh, this person we are also using the set age in the next line of uh, of john and setting it to 35 right uh, we can use the set age, but we don't have a set name, so you can't set the name of John, right? Considering, say, in a real world application, also, if you have a user class, you will most likely not be changing the name of the user multiple times, right? Uh, but your age will obviously change every year, right? Now, if you want to set another age, if you see the second last line, uh, John dot set age minus five, age will not be updated because remember in the class. Uh, if you notice the set age method, we already have the validation there, which is protecting the mm, class and its member variables, which is its attributes from being updated with an invalid value, right? So this is one of the main reasons why you encapsulate uh, the, uh, basically what encapsulation is. Basically, you are providing access modifiers to access the data members. You are hiding their direct access, right? Rather, you are giving methods, public methods, which can be used by any class who wants to uh, set or get the uh, the values of that of that attributes right and then in the last line we are using john dot display info display info is like we mentioned is a public method which is going to display both the name and age of of john right of this person right so one of the things uh, that you might want to notice here is that nowhere are we using john dot age or john dot name right that is because we can't do that uh, uh, and we have to use the get age and get 
uh, name. The reason is because the access modifiers, if you see in the uh, person class, are actually setting the values of those attributes, and the attributes themselves are private, right? So if you see this name and age, the first two lines of the person class, they are private uh, access modifiers. So you can't directly access the name and age of a person. You have to access them via the access modifiers, which are the getter or the setter methods, right? Now, we have been talking about access modifiers. Now let's look at what access modifiers are. So in basically, access modifiers are also very important concept, particularly uh, related to encapsulation. It basically determines the visibility and accessibility of, of the members of a class, right? In most cases, in most object-oriented programming language, uh, there are three uh, types of access modifiers, which is private, where you can only access the, uh, uh, the members within the class, right? Uh, the next is public, where, where it is accessible from anywhere. Uh, remember, the R members were defined as private because it were only accessible within the class and uh, the getter and setter were public which were accessible from anywhere the, so we could access them from another class called main right and then there is protected where you can access it within the class and also its subclasses right in some cases most of the time this is not defined in various places but in some cases, there is also a fourth access modifier, which is called a package access. If your class is defined within the same package, you should be able to access that, right? So by default, you get the package access. Okay. Now, let's look at some of the benefits of encapsulation. Obviously, now you can understand it promotes data integrity by preventing direct modification of data uh, from outside the class, right? Uh, second is uh, better maintenance and flexibility, like for example, uh, as the changes to the internal representation right, of a class can be made without affecting the external code that uses that class. So that makes it much more maintainable and flexible. right? And it is also very secure and uh, robust, uh, primarily by the use of access modifiers. right? We, using the access modifiers, we can control the level of encapsulation and hide the internal details of a class, right? which makes it more secure. For example, in our person class, we were uh, we were adding the validation and not letting another uh, external class to set the age of a person into a negative value, right? So that was a protection layer that we put in the in the class, right? So that makes it more secure and robust. Right? So that is encapsulation in object-oriented programming. Hopefully this was useful.